Thank you for joining me on this drawing tutorial today. I will go over some basics of charcoal materials. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future tutorials and draw along videos. You probably have been to the stores and you would have seen different materials, different types of charcoal, maybe wanted to try it, maybe was, were a little bit scared of trying it out, but this is the video where you will get to find out a lot of stuff about this and perhaps even decide if this is your kind of medium or not. So let's start with charcoal itself. We have compressed charcoal, we have willow charcoal, and we've got charcoal pencils. Now, what are they used for? What are the best choices for you? Okay, so willow charcoal. Now, willow charcoal is a very, very light, almost weightless kind of material. And I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it has sort of a, like these little, almost branch-like um, textures on it. And the thing is, it is a branch that has been turned into charcoal, okay, and nothing really else has been done to it. So when you start to draw with it, it creates marks. You can smudge it. And it's reasonably inexpensive so you can get a pack of like 10 or 20 in there just for a few bucks. What is this good for? This type of material is perfect for quick sketches. I used to go through boxes of this when I was studying at university and we did live drawing classes. So you would have very quick sketches like sometimes one minute poses. Now the plus side is that it is very light weight wise it's really inexpensive and it's pretty much available everywhere art shops stationery shops you know you'd find it everywhere the downside is that it doesn't give you a really really rich really dark shade so it's sort of like this is pretty much the darkest that it, that it goes and as soon as you blow on it or as soon as you start to smudge it you can see how quite a bit of it comes off so it has a really soft grip onto the paper it doesn't hold on to it very tightly and that's why it's really good for sketches maybe preliminary drawings you know when you're trying to work out a composition all of this you know would be good for that but for producing a final or detailed work probably not your best choice just like with most charcoal materials you're going to get it all over the place see just holding it there yeah my hands already um, gone dark um, so just something else to keep in mind that you need you know you need a space you don't want to do it on a white carpet or anything like this <laughs> no. our next material is compressed charcoal so it's pretty much the same thing but it just has been compressed so it had another process done to it and when you use that you can get a much darker shade so you see if you compare this and this and I pretty much applied the same pressure this stuff can go really really dark um, you can also smudge it and you see when you're comparing this shade to this shade it's also much soft it's almost sort of a creamy kind of you know kind of a like soft pastel type of texture uh, more so than the willow charcoal it is much heavier so this little piece is much heavier than this whole thing and it probably will last for a little bit longer just like this stuff as well you can get it in packets or you can get it um, just one by one in art shop so if you're trying it out you don't know if that's the right thing for you just go get one and, and trial it out and then if you love it go for it if you don't well that's just a one little thing now when you've got also your um, charcoal you can also especially compressed one because compressed sort of comes in the perfect shape when it's new this one's been quite a bit used 
you can also use it sideways to cover larger areas and so on let's go on to another charcoal material that is probably if you've seen any other charcoal tutorials this is the one material that gets covered in there quite uh, often and that's a charcoal pencil so what is the charcoal pencil it's pretty much this compressed charcoal that is stuck in the pencil shape surrounded by a wooden block classes for this is that it actually comes in different softness just like pencil if you would like to you can watch a video that i've done on pencils where i explain about hard and soft pencils so a similar thing would apply to all of these so for example this is hard this is medium and this is soft um, what the difference is i'll just i'll just do a little sort of a thing here so soft is quite dark it's quite smudgy uh, medium so this is soft this is medium this is a bit harder and see it keeps its shape a bit better so the harder the material is the sharper you can get it and the longer it will keep its shape and the softer you know you get a completely opposite effect where it is um, very smudgy and it's hard to get small details with and stuff like this so, and this is hard so sometimes you can also get um, not just hard soft and medium sometimes you they do same markings as on the pencils you know it will be like HB H or like 6B most of the ones that I've seen would just have hard soft and medium so for example if we try to I'll use my clean finger my pinky if, if we if we try to blend the hard one see it still blends but um, it's quite soft you it, it sort of sticks to the paper much stronger and it you know doesn't blend as well now medium you get a little bit more of it coming off see that sort of a shaded area is a bit darker and then the soft you know that, that you can you can compare the smudging effect of these uh, again up to you whatever you prefer you can use or um, perhaps even get all different softness grades and then within one work you might decide that you want to use this for one effect and that for another um, now another word that sometimes is used is dark so dark for soft so there's another soft pencil just just like sometimes different companies would have different um, names for their product so this is the overview on charcoal then there's another material that is sometimes mistaken for charcoals and sometimes you would see it on YouTube in different tutorials and people would be using one saying I'm using white charcoal charcoal is pretty much only black if you are using other colors then it's already a soft pastel it's not technically a charcoal nonetheless they make for really great mixed media projects to use you know charcoal and soft pastel i'll use gray paper to demonstrate it's pretty much a very similar thing you just end up having white instead of um instead of black can be real fun to combine especially when using different um, colored paper uh, but I will get onto that a little bit later you can also get them in pencils as well so if you want to keep your hands a little bit cleaner uh, I suggest go for pencils the plus side of using large chunks is that you can cover larger areas uh, much quicker than you would you know with with something like this I also have a separate tutorial on soft pastels and that is on patreon so please feel free to go and check it out and uh, if you decide to follow me there that would be great because you will get to see extra tips extra tricks um, and extra tutorials as well as supporting me to actually create more videos for YouTube as well let's talk about smudging different artists work differently but I know a lot of people pretty much almost everyone whoever uses charcoals they use them for that you know effect of smudginess because to be honest it's actually really hard to keep it from smudging 
and I will talk about this a little bit later as well. When you are working with charcoal, right? So we've got we've got all this area here. Um, you can use different smudging materials. Again, I went over different types of smudging materials in my pencil graphite tutorial that I will link down below. You can have a look in there, and um, you can always use smudge sticks but I do suggest keeping pencil smudge sticks you know graphite smudge sticks and charcoal gra uh, smudge sticks separately so they're pretty cheap um, so you can just keep couple for this and couple for that but just like with pencil you can always smudge it like this the cool thing about this is that you can um, even smudge little areas you know create really cool effects like for example if you're drawing fur or you know anything really that requires quite a bit of detail even though I would not suggest using charcoal for very detailed subject matters um, or styles of, of rendering but if you do want to get more detail then using something like a properly uh, done smudge stick you can make them yourself or you can just buy them from the shop is definitely a worth it um, another thing if you don't want to go and buy special materials you just want to try things out you can always use a um, just a regular cotton bud where you don't have as much control as you do with a smudge stick but still you know it's a small enough sort of an area where you can you know you can create that smudgy effect another thing is your fingers now I know if you watched my graphite video I said try to never use fingers when you're smudging graphite because of the oils on your hands because of the sweat and things like that that can go into the paper now when you are working on sketches I'm not talking about like final projects that you want to frame or gift or sell I'm talking about if you're doing preliminary drawings um, or if you're doing quick sketches just as training I think that this is the material where you can get away with using your hands and the reason for that is that charcoal is very very absorbent so it will actually be absorbing the oils and also when you're using it see you, you actually end, end up with having piles of it pretty much on on your paper so when you start to use fingers your oils would hardly get a chance to get through to the paper and most likely just would be absorbed by the charcoal that would be stuck to your hands anyway so if you do love using your fingers this is the material to use them with but not graphite okay just just something to remember so there um, and sometimes when you are using your fingers it almost feels like you're sculpting objects you know when you when you're um, adding more shade or more light to them now let's talk about erasing your charcoal it's quite a tricky subject because charcoal is really hard to remove with pretty much anything and I'll just give you a little demonstration of it for example if you're using your you know your normal vinyl rubbers that would take care of your pencil without any problems when you start to use it on charcoal especially if you've got lots of it you sort of like you know it does remove it but it, it's more like it, it misplaces it it moves it from one area to the other um, and it can be really really tricky also if you're working quite messy you would end up having your rubber pretty much look like this and five minutes it's just something to keep in mind that when you are working with charcoal it's probably better to apply it in layers and rely more on building it up slowly uh, so you're less likely create situations where you need to remove it uh, with erasers um, because it is quite tricky you can also use putty rubbers as well they do work a bit better than vinyl rubbers but again um, make sure that you use a separate rubber for your charcoal and for your graphite set so that they don't mix because it's probably okay using graphite eraser 
on your charcoals but not charcoal on the array you know on the graphite materials because then you'll just there'll be a lot of cross contamination <laughs> so with this you know you can also soften things um, you can reshape it and then you've got cleaner side and you can go for it again um, also another thing doesn't matter what kind of rubber you use you will never be able to get um, area like this back to the white paper you can make it lighter but you will never get it as light as this that's why a lot of people prefer to mix graphite with white pastel so when you've created something like that but you need it lighter you pretty much just go in there and you apply this like for things like highlights that's why you know as i said it is a perfect sort of a mixed media combination let's talk about paper is there a right and wrong paper to choose for your charcoal drawings maybe yes maybe no it depends on your personal preference but let's go over some of the points that you might want to look at when choosing paper for your drawing if you're using something like this this is quite a smooth um, hot pressed you know hot rolled paper uh, which is sort of a it's not shiny but it's kind of a verging on the on the side of being shiny it's probably not the best paper to use for your charcoal and that's because it's much harder for charcoal to grip onto it so when you start to smudge especially in the case of willow charcoal there you know once you start to smudge things on there or you finished your drawing it's it doesn't actually stay on there very well so if you want to use something that has a little bit more grip so for example it's not it's quite matte perhaps or maybe it's um, you know it's got a bit of texture to it like even watercolor can work quite well and sometimes you can get like tinted watercolor paper that can be quite cool mm -hmm. to um, use with with charcoals so this has a little bit more texture this is more like a watercolor quite a smooth watercolor paper but if I go over it and for example then I decide to to smudge it see it actually grabs onto the paper quite well you can even hear the sound of it just just you know sticking to the paper pretty much um, now compared to say something like this which is much softer but then again if you don't like having texture you know through there because if you do have texture on your paper whatever materials you would be using would be picking it up so it becomes more visible more intensified if you don't like that look then perhaps you want to find smooth paper but still try to stay away from glossy papers but again personal preference Perhaps there are some people out there that would love to use glossy paper with charcoal, you know. Different techniques require different approaches. So now let's talk about colored paper. If you want to use two colors, you know, like for example, you want to create, I don't know, a sketch of something, right? And you can use gray paper or paper that already has a shade to it that's not white then you can work both ways so you can apply um, darker values for example right and you can apply lighter value so you can apply something that would bring quite a bit of light to it so something that will be lighter than the paper itself you know like a little little highlight there um, and um, you know you can you can create quite, quite a few levels of shade and light when you're using something that already has a shade and you can create uh, a, a really really cool sort of a effect of layering the shades mid shades and highlights and so on when you have you know when, when you have your backdrop with already existing shade 
there you go now another thing especially if you're beginning and you're not sure you don't want to go out and, and buy a lot of things another cool material that you can use is cardboard I mean that's free sometimes um, <laughs> and it already has that you know that brown tone on there it does have a bit of texture so if you're working with quite a bit of um, expression and stuff like this you know you can play with that and create really cool artworks I mean I've seen some amazing charcoal drawings that were just done on you know broken down boxes okay so that's just another thing to think about let's talk about another important thing and that is fixative you know you want something to actually stop all of this coming off so if you if you just pay attention here just for a second I'll pop this down see this this sketch that I just did before if I do this you see how much dust comes off um, that's mudginess that's wonderful when you're working with something that you want to smudge is absolute hell when it comes to storing your works I'm not even talking about final works like if it's something final then definitely 100% you should be doing this but if it's even if it's drawings that you'd like to keep that you don't want to smudge I mean unless these are just really quick preliminary sketches then you don't need to bother but if it's something that you know you really like what you've done you want to keep that what will happen is that you're going to place it somewhere you're going to put it somewhere and this is what's going to happen you know like all this stuff is just going to go into everything else and um, all of this material is just going to smudge see if I do this see how it, it just it just keeps smudging what do you want to do you want to try and fix it you want to fix it in place um, I haven't actually seen a fixative that in one layer would fix like lots of loose charcoal but it still helps so you can use things like this so this is just a spray fixative that is for different kind of like pastels chalks um, charcoals pencil drawings sometimes as well you can use that on make sure you do this outdoors or somewhere you know in a really good ventilated area because uh, some of these things can have reasonably toxic smells to them but yeah this is just something that you would want to do you would just want to spray your um, artwork maybe even a couple of layers if it's got a lot of the sort of a loose stuff going on and what this will do is if you take something and you try and smudge it you will probably still be transferring some of this material but if you're just storing it somewhere if you've got you know if you've got it under the glass for example if you're displaying something like this you know framed um, that would be fine it's not just going to transfer so easily another thing that you can use uh, instead of specialized materials like this if for example you know as I said you're just learning you're just sketching you just want to stop this mess going all throughout your house you can just use a hairspray yes hairspray works really well I know a lot of people will be like what but that's gonna stay in your paper or whatever I've used so many different hairsprays and it's never stained my paper so perhaps if you're really really um, nervous about it just take a clean piece of paper spray it and then let it dry and see if it's stained it or not and the best ones I find are stronghold uh, hairsprays um, <laughs> so yeah just something you know if you if you really fit up with the smudging everywhere and it's nothing really precious just use that to spray it over in fact I even prefer some hairsprays over some art fixatives I know weird but that's life so overall what can I tell you charcoals are great if you're into smudgy thing I personally know few people that hate them and wouldn't go close to them just because of how messy they get and how hard it is to get into the detail but if you are going for speed if you want to create quick sketches if you want to shade large areas then I definitely would strongly suggest trying it out I will do a few tutorials in the future um, with you know showing you maybe some draw along things with charcoal so you know make sure that you subscribe and press the notification bell so you won't miss those i hope you like this tutorial and thank you very much for joining me and drawing with me today <laughs>